Okay, hi, so now we're on page 52 and I'm gonna start out by introducing whole steps and half steps. So if we visualize these on the guitar, the easiest way to describe these is a whole step is two frets above or below a note and a half step is one fret above or below a note. It's that simple. You don't even really need to think about the theory or the note name, so if you think of it that way. So if I put my hand down anywhere, a whole step would be two frets up and a half step would be one fret up. It's that easy, okay? So half steps, right, whole steps. Okay, so those are whole steps and half steps. Let's talk about how these relate to the major scale. So what is a major scale? Major scale is the most important scale in Western European derived musical traditions, okay? So anywhere that that music went, it's very, very important. We use that as the basis for analysis as well. It's our reference point, okay? It's a scale, you guys have all heard it, right? So. C major scale. Earlier in the book, I gave you a couple technique exercises. The Dorian scale for the D string, the Mixolydian scale when I introduced the notes on the G string. And you'll notice I used a system of analysis saying like one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, or one, two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven. That's flatted compared to the major scale. So this is our kind of baseline point of reference for many, many things in music. So it's very important. How does this relate with whole steps and half steps? If you think about it, okay, it's a seven note scale and the order of whole steps and half steps are whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Now the way that I personally like to teach it is to me it's easier to think of the half steps falling between three and four and seven and eight. Now that's much easier to visualize if I play it along one string as opposed to playing it you know, going up through multiple strings like I just did when I illustrated to you, right? So let me do it along one string so you can really see the whole steps and half steps. So I'll start out on the note C and I'll play C then whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So you can see it pretty easily there, right? Again, I'll do it one more time. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Okay, and that's our major scale as it lays along one string. And I just did that because it's easier to see linearly along one string as opposed to playing it here. Right? There you can see it a little bit easier, okay? Let's take a look on the bottom of page 52, and we're just gonna play it in the open position of the guitar, okay? So, if you look at it here, it's just gonna go like this. And that was out of time, but just to show you the sound. It goes very nicely with our C major chord, or our C major seven. Okay, that scale fits perfectly. Let's talk about the next concept on the bottom of the page called the octave. Octo is Latin for eight. So think about it, an octopus, eight legs. An octagon is an eight-sided building, okay, or an eight-sided shape, excuse me, or it's a Chuck Norris movie. So if I'm going up a major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the eighth note is that C again, okay? So this is an octave, okay? And we can play octaves many different ways on the guitar. Certain people have used octaves quite a bit in their solos. Django Reinhardt, who I mentioned in one of the discussions, used octaves a lot. Um, Wes Montgomery used octaves a lot. It's just a nice way to fill out a melody, to double it in two different registers. So, if we're on the top of page 53, you can take a look at it. It's a five measure example, and it's all octaves, okay? So, the notes are C, C, D, D, E, E, F, F, G, G, F, F, E, E, D, D, C. You'll notice I also have some specific fingerings there, okay? The fourth beat of measure one, I want you to use your pinky on the note D, okay? The second beat of measure three, I want you to use your pinky on the note G. And then again, the fourth beat of measure four, I want you to use your pinky on the note D. And the reason why, if you look at my left hand, let me walk you through this exercise. It's gonna go C to C, D to D, okay? That's the beginning. The reason why I have this with the pinky is, 
Once you get used to it, it's much easier than going. See how I have to jump with my third finger? So this is a good workout for your pinky and actually it's easier once you get comfortable with it. The same thing with the G, so let me show you. Here we go. C, C, D, D, E, E, F, F, G, G, F, F, E, E, D, D, C. And if you want, you could add the C on the top. So again, when we got to the top, F, F, and then it's, instead of having to go like this, you just go. Now with the right hand, you can use a pick. You can use your thumb on the lower notes and an index or middle on the top. My middle finger's kind of messed up now, so I'm gonna do it all thumb and index. But this is a great exercise for both your right hand and your left hand because we've got big jumps happening here. So let me play it for you with the metronome. One, two, three, four. So now we're on technique exercise 11 on page 53, and I wanna show you two new notes. The first one is the note B on the seventh fret of the high E string, and then we have the note C with two ledger lines on the eighth fret of the high E string. And we're gonna need these to play the C major scale in a different area of the neck than the open position. So let's talk about this fingering here. Whenever you see the seventh fret, it's going to be your first finger. Whenever you see the eighth fret, it's going to be your second finger. The ninth fret will be your third, and the 10th fret will be your pinky, okay? So you can read the tab, but try to read it from the actual notes when you feel comfortable with it. This will be tricky for you at first, okay, to play it with good technique, keeping your fingers close down, not moving around left to right, hitting in the fingertips, using the pinky, okay? Let me play it for you. One, two, three, four. So that's a C major scale, and instead of playing it down here in the open position, instead of going, you know, which is fine as well, but it's not a movable shape. This is a movable shape. So what do I mean by that? You could play it here on the eighth fret, and because this is the note C, it's going to be a C major scale. Let's say I just move it down to the fifth fret. This is the note A. If I play the scale here now, it's an A major scale. If I play it on the third fret, it's a G major scale, etc. So this is very useful, not just as a technique exercise, but also you're able to play the scale in different keys just by moving that fingering around. Later in the book, we're gonna learn how to play any one of these, you know, C, A, any major scale all over the neck. So we're gonna have to learn other fingerings, but this is a great one to start with.